Now, I get a lot of interest in some of the flies that I hold up uh, when I'm basically putting together a box and I kept getting asked about this fly here, what it was, what's the wing and what is it. I said, well, basically it's a, a it's an easy butcher as I call it. Uh, instead of using the Marler Blues for the wing, I'm using uh, the Peacock Neck Feather, which is a lovely blue colour. And it works extremely well. It's what's I think, times is uh, better than even the Blues. Uh, the Marler Blues, which a lot of people don't like using, and to be honest with you, it's not the easiest wing to get nice to sit nice on a fly. Though you don't need it to sit perfect because once you start to fish it, it'll break up much the same as the fibres I like on here, they'll start to come apart. And that's what you want anyway, so... But we're going to tie this one, we tie that because that's what everybody was asking about. Now the hook choice is entirely up to yourself. I'm using a competition heavyweight size 12, which is from Fully Mill. Uh, thread I'm going to be using is a, an 8 in, in black. So I'm going to catch the thread in. Basically pull away the fibres. Uh, the waist, sorry, and then just work down the shank until we align with the, the bar by the hook. Or just before we get around the bend. Now, I'm, I'm actually going to be using a cock neck. This is a, basically a dyed fluorescent red, really bright. You can see. I'm going to use even the hackles, the small hackles for the throat, uh, and I'm going to use the large ones for the tail. Now, you use what you like uh, or what you have. So what I'm going to do here is bring out the fibres 90 degrees from the stem. Tips normally line up, and naturally line up anyway. I take enough off to form the tail. You're looking for a length, round about the length of the, shot, the hook. And you go back a turn here. This turn here is actually onto the bare hook and that one's onto the, the actual thread. Just to hold it for a second, just there. Now I'm using, this is number 27, which is a venue wire, which is equivalent to a, a small. So when you catch this in, but when you go back a turn, keeping the thread tight, catch it in. The length of the body. And then, this is male flycraft tinsel. This is a kind of, you know, it's a large, it's a gold silver. So what I'm going to do is, I'll turn the length out, and I cut it into a point. It's very fine, this. So I'm going to cut it into a taper so that I get it started. There's a couple of ways you could do the tinsel. Now the gold side is facing myself, and the cut is on the top. So what I'm going to do is work my way up. Nice, nice and tidy, so you get a nice body. When you come up, you're looking like maybe 2 mil from the, the eye. So there's the taper cuts on that side, so that gives you a nice start. And then you just work your way up. Because it's a large one, slightly overlapping the last turn, uh, the, tins, the wire's going to hold this. So we two or three turns at the top to tie it down. Take away the waist. Bring your wire up. Nice straight turn at the back. And about five turns on the way up. Now this last turn I basically bring it straight up, follow it with the thread and put a 90 degree bend into it. Basically what that does is puts like an elbow and it keeps these tight and it locks in uh, the tight turns that you've just done up the body of the rib. There's a nice base of thread there, bend and break away the wire. And it wax. Now as I say, I'm going to use these small hackles up. Now some people might think that's cock hackle, it's not normally you would use that in a, in a wet fly. Uh, and, and with these sort of Chinese or uh, Indian necks, uh, you get a soft fibre down the base, and it's not the best uh, for tying with sometimes, but especially it, it's the stem's quite rounded and thick, and it will sort of roll on you a wee bit, but we get you manage it's fine. So, what I've done is I've taken away the fluff, and I'm going to tie it in down there. Now when, we were, when I started tying, you just tied round what materials you had and it was just chickens. Normal chickens that run about the, uh, the farmer's yard, that's what we used. Nowadays we get a huge choice of feathers. So what I'm doing here is 
got it in obviously, front of the, the hackle is facing towards the eye. I'm just going to fold it just by simply just running, it's not, not hard, I'm just bringing it through my fingers like this. So that folds the hackle. This first bit, I just make sure the fibres are behind the, the first turn. So we go one, two, three. It's like a dry fly at the moment. So then take your thread down towards the eye. What I'm showing you is basically how I used to tie, or how a lot of people tied traditional flies. And then fold back the tip. Write that off. And then we just encourage them basically to lay back. There we are. An old way of doing things as well, if you're putting the wing on you would basically bring the fibres down either side of the shank to basically make a space for it and make the throat a bit better. I want to keep it it's quite open so I'm just rolling my fingers through just like this, softens it back. But what you've got is a quite a nice sparse fibre, a lot of light, nice and shiny, much like this shine you get from uh, say seals fur, you'll get from the hackle. And hen hackles don't give you that sometimes. No, well, they don't because they're dull. Uh, now I've got some peacock, I've got some neck feathers here. I'm just looking. So I've got the blue neck feather there, a nice blue on this one. I try and use up the small ones. So what I'm going to do is take away the fluff, the small feathers. Now I'm going to take the tip out of this. Oh, wait a minute, I'll roll it first. Just What I like to do is just roll these fibres, just bring them together. There we are. And then they'll sit okay, looking at it. So you're looking for a wing length, just the back of the hook or so. And it's flat like that, so I'm going to fold it so I've got a nice uh, blue fibres either side of the, the wing. Come in with two or three turns. Couple of pinched and loop. Maybe just a tad too long. It's sitting nice as well. But that's what happens. Just bring it down a wee bit. Couple of pinch and loops again. Two or three turns. That's fine. If you're happy with that, trim away. Just use any sharp pair of scissors. A bit of wax on your thread. Now what I do is hold the wing, take the thread to the eye, I should quite a fibre there, thread to the eye, and then bring it up into the cut ends of the peacock, which basically is what it's doing is slightly folding it back. And there we go. And there you that's basically the, you could stop at that. that you don't need, I mean I'm gonna put the jungle cock on it, but just to show you. But that's a good enough fly itself. Uh, it's a nice, nice shape as well. So I'm going to take two eyes out. Basically, you take away the fluff. The other side. I got asked a lot about putting two on at a time. So I'm only going to put, a lot of people struggle doing it. So I'm going to do one at a time, so I'm going to catch this here, taking away the fluff, a couple of turns. Now the, the advantage of putting them on together at the same time, that two turns there would be holding two, but now because I'm doing it individually, I'm obviously going to put another two turns, so it's bulking your head up slightly, so there's, if you can learn to put two on at the same time, then do that. Give my other eye now, up into the wing, tying on the wee black area, it's the softest area, it makes it grips better. So there's another two turns. Just check your eye, back on my thread, now I'm taking it down to the eye, folding back the stems of the jungle cock. And then I'm just going to work my way up. Now you do bulk up the head doing this, but the jungle cock's never going to pull out. Keeping it thread tight and forget the stems just now, 
wet finish and trim away your thread now I'm looking for the stems which is the one there I don't really see it, I don't think the fish would see it sitting into the dressing a bit here so I'm going to have to use the scissors to try and bring it out there you go this one's easier because it's still got a bit of fluff on it that's what I said anyway trim away and there we go. And that's basically a, oh, I normally call it bloody butcher. Uh, but it is a bloody butcher, but instead of having the blue, the mallard blues for the wing, it's got the peacock neck. And then all we'll I have to do is coat a varnish. Well, I would probably do, do a couple. Just work your way around. This is just clear varnish. Some people like to use a resin now. I'm quite happy with it. The jungle, sorry, the, the clear varnish. They say that'll set, they give it another coat of varnish, and that's it. And there we are, and that's the, the bloody butcher with the peacock neck feather. As you see, it is really nice, it's certainly worth, worth doing, a nice pattern. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And again, if you enjoy the videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, as I say, it does help. Uh, it basically shows you, it shows me that you're enjoying the videos. And thank you for watching.